when I first saw this instrument inside of Audio Tool, I was literally shocked at just how powerful <laughs> they could make something to run inside of a uh, basic web browser. Uh, this instrument is actually probably more powerful than some of the better synth offerings that are available in fully paid digital audio workstations you can get today. And so because it's so powerful and because there's two really distinct ways of working with this, I'm not going to show you uh, myself making a sound to fit with the rest of the composition. Rather, I'm just going to go through two different ways that you could go about working with this. And then from there, I hope that you maybe combine those two different uh, techniques and make some sounds of your own because really this thing is just a total beast. And I'm just going to go ahead and jump into it. So I'm assuming that you already have a good idea about how a lot of this stuff works. If you don't, you need to go back and watch the videos on Soundation where we cover the simple and we cover the Wub Machine. Uh, but basically, I'm starting out now with just a sine wave here. It's the only one that's in at the moment. I can go ahead and mess with this envelope some. I'm going to work in legato mode as compared to polyphonic mode because in polyphonic mode, you can see how much we can spike the uh, CPU by playing a lot of notes. You can see how it jumped up there to 37. I don't want that because in polyphonic mode, it's actually playing through the entire envelope for e at each and every note I press. So with legato in this instrument, it kind of does uh, a bit of a blending job. So it doesn't necessarily cut the envelope, but it doesn't let me play a bunch of notes at once, which is kind of what I like about it. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and work with that. I'm gonna go and choose just a random waveform take a listen to it and already that's one of the big differences between this instrument and everything else we've seen we have all of these options for different waveforms and they all are going to sound different because they have different overtones different harmonics the sine wave just having one everything else then in here has some sort of combination of overtones at odd even harmonics and maybe some are just thrown in at random you never know. And so you can go through and kind of listen to what you like. Let's go ahead and turn the unisono on. So we're creating copies of this sound. And then we can detune it. And spread it out like so. I could pan it if I wanted to. But let's just go in here and set up something nuts. Let's pick a few different waveforms just at random let's take that one i'll take this one then i'll leave the last one as a sine wave this is going to be my like sub oscillator here so i'll just pull this down by 12. okay we're in semitone so down 12 is an octave if i want to be crazy i could go down like 24 but i think i'm going to be happy with 12. Yeah, definitely. Let's start to bring these other ones in. And we can create like a chord. So there you go, just like that. This is already so much more powerful and interesting sounding than anything I think we've been able to come up with so far in either program, just because we have all of those choices. And we can even detune these guys a little bit further if we want. So really cool. And then we also have a filter down here we can use. So the little keyboard tracking. Cool, that's about where I want it. And we could choose if we want a low pass, a high pass, or something in between. So I'll choose something that's just a little bit in between. And then maybe just a touch of resonance. And now this is where this gets really fun because we can choose from three different envelopes 
that we want to use on the filter and we could also use one of these two LFOs. These LFOs are also very complex. You can choose any of the uh, shapes in here. I'm probably just going to stick with a sine wave for now. You can choose where that starts. I'm going to start it at the beginning. And then we have, of course, a rate. We have a delay time. And then we have a blend time. So a blend time is like having this LFO kind of fade in. So instead of just talking about, let's listen to it. So I'll put some blend time in. So I make it a bar. And then delay time is just how long it will wait before it even starts the blend. So we could also set this to like half, half note. And then it starts to blend it in. So that's pretty cool. We could also restart this, meaning that each time I hit a new note, it's going to start over the cycle of this LFO. So you're not going to get something like in the middle if your note isn't of a particular length. Uh, that can be very useful a lot of times. That trips people up from time to time, I've noticed, is not having the restart on on the LFO. Uh, that will be more noticeable to you when you actually start to uh, draw in notes and stuff. So keep that in mind if you're feeling like you have an LFO and things are going a little wonky definitely check the restart. But as I was mentioning, we could also have a envelope working on this filter. So let's bring this up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is go into envelope two and set a long attack time. Okay, a pretty long attack, middle sustain. So you can hear we're setting the depth. So if I put this all the way up to 100, we'll really hear it. Like so, and we could even go in here if we wanted to, and we could set different amplitude envelopes for our different oscillators. They're called operators in this case because we can do phase slash frequency modulation with these guys. That's going to be our second example. Uh, but for now, maybe I'd go in here to this second one and have it also working with envelope two. So you'll start to hear this note come in a little bit later. Okay, so this time now you'll really be able to hear it. And it starts to go away. And by default, they'll all be working with the main. So then whatever you're setting here is kind of like uh, a wet dry control amongst whatever sort of amplitude envelope that you want to use there. Okay, so that's kind of the first example of a sound. Let's go in here and let's reset this guy and actually talk about what we can do with the phase modulation. So I'm going to jump out of semitone mode and go into ratio mode for just a second. And what we're doing here is we're actually going to be modulating the pitch of whatever wave we want to choose here with the pitch of another all right and it doesn't necessarily have to be on you don't have to hear it so as the first example i would show you this is working basically with lfos so if we set these to really really low ratios or really low numbers basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modulating the pitch based off of like b so if i go in here and set this 100 percent to b we won't really hear a difference right now uh because Whoopsie, sorry about that. Because this isn't really running, it's at zero. But as I bring this up, I want you to listen to the pitch. So what does that sound similar to? 
It sounds very similar to taking an LFO and running it onto um, the pitch of an oscillator. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Okay, just because this isn't called an LFO, if we have it go slowly enough, it will work like an LFO. All right, and I'm pretty sure this, you can't even have the LFO go to modulate pitch because there's no reason to do that when you could set it up like this. So this is like your classic vibrato effect. Now, as we start to go up higher and higher, what's happening is we're eventually gonna go into audio rate range, AKA what we can hear, 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz. And when that starts to happen, because it's modulating so, so, so fast, what we're gonna get is we're gonna start to generate what's called sidebands, AKA additional harmonics. And those additional harmonics are what's going to add the depth and the richness to our sound. Go too crazy with this and it will just sound like a bunch of noise. Get it right and it can be really amazing. So now we're starting to hear it. So because uh, B is modulating A so fast, we're actually only hearing one pitch. We're not hearing these separately, okay? It's going so fast that it's generating all these extra sidebands. And those aren't particularly pleasant. So normally the rule with something like FM, especially for beginners, is to always work with basic ratios. If you work with basic ratios, like one to one, two to one, four to one, eight to one, AKA octaves, the sidebands that are generated are going to be very harmonically uh, consonant with what you have like here, like A with the one. So whatever's based on this one, that's what we're running that into. So I can go ahead and set this to one as well. And now when I bring this in, Oops, I actually went down way too low. A little nasally, but sounds good. Maybe I'll go up and change this one to two. And then change this one to four. You can even modulate it off of itself if you want. And there is a pitch envelope in case you want to mess with that. So I'll just turn that on. And that's gonna make things sound crazy because it's really distorting this ratio as it's going through. So that's why it sounds so freaking dissonant as we're going through and we can really slow this down. So what's so cool about that is as it gets really close, you can actually hear it like locking into pitch. And that's really the whole idea behind phase or frequency modulation. You can work, you can use those words interchangeably because phase and frequency modulation, they're slightly different processes, but they both generate sidebands in the same place. So they're really the same thing. And the most famous frequency modulation synthesizer of all, the DX7, is actually using phase modulation. They just use the word frequency modulation probably because they knew they were selling it to musicians who were familiar with the word frequency, maybe not so much with phase, which they would have thought was more like an audio engineering thing. So it's probably just a sales tactic. Either way, it's a wonderful synthesizer, not fun to program. In fact, almost impossible to program, but some really classic sounds out of that. And um, I use emulations of that thing all the time, really all the time and just use presets. It's great. So where this becomes more powerful is you really don't need filters when you're using frequency or phase modulation. They allow you to use one. So if you're kind of new to this whole process, it's more useful to use the filter than to do what I'm gonna explain. But you can actually, if you think about it, we're starting with just a sine wave. You can use other waves as well, but classically you just use sine waves because you can generate as many harmonics as you need with just sine waves. But classically, if all of these are down to nothing, we could actually just use different envelopes to be adding or subtracting 
frequencies to be adding or subtracting harmonics and therefore doing the same thing that a filter does. So as an example, I could put this up to like 100 and now we could go to envelope two, have a really long attack time, a long decay time, low sustain, not that long of an attack time, it takes forever. Go three and three, then a bit of a release. And now just set this up like so. Remember what I said about when you go too high? This is what that's what happens. We're having some mad problems with that. Let's use B instead. It's doing what I want it to do, but it's just going too crazy. So I'll go to B and change that envelope to 100 and add the modulation amount to be 100 here. And now we can hear this. So normally what we'd have set up is probably like, I don't know, a sine wave or something. And we would have taken the filter and gone like with the filter. But now we can control that all with our envelopes here and just using additional operators or oscillators. They're called operators because that's traditionally what it's called when you're working with phase modulation or frequency modulation. I think at this point, like nomenclature and getting the names right isn't so important as long as you understand the basic idea. So what happens if you use like some really wacky like ratios? Things don't sound quite as good. Yeah, or in this case, it sounds pretty cool. This will be kind of fun. So maybe we'll set this one up to be kind of the opposite. We'll have it immediately hit in and then kind of decay down to nothing. So if you've ever wondered how someone like Skrillex gets his crazy bass sounds, um, he actually uses FM and he uses it in this way. And to use FM in this way, you don't have to be a genius. Um, in fact, you just have to understand that the cleaner the ratio, the cleaner the sidebands that are um, present or that become present that you'll hear, and the less clean the ratio, the dirtier sorts of sounds you can get. And now if you really have something that's like just utterly nasty and not really something you can control all that well, like that, for example, you can go in there and use the filter. But I think in this case, we'll just leave D out. 